Hello community, let me tell you my secret about link prediction in graph machine learning. So, you know we have a dataset, a graph dataset, where we have a lot of nodes with a node feature tensor, and we have edges, maybe with edge feature tensors. The structural information of the graph interlinkage is mathematically represented in the adjacency matrix. And now we ask ourselves, why the hell does link prediction work on this data? What is the theory, the underlying reason that, li that link prediction in graph machine learning works? Now, graph machine learning, just a second, calculates simply node embeddings, node embeddings for each and every node in your graph. And they calculate the embeddings as high dimensional vectors or tensors in a vector space, in a tensor space, in a topological space. And you can encode a lot of information in tensors. So, we have a structural information of the graph in form of our adjacency tensor, and then for each node and for each edge, we have feature tensors. For example, if you have a node that represents a book, the feature tensor can encode the content, the semantic content of the book. I showed you in my last video how to take a document and provide or create a feature tensor. Hint, it was with set and transformers. So, great! And I showed you in one of my last videos that for GraphML, we have graph neural network layers for recommender systems, and they just fusion a set of vectors into a different single vector. Now, my last video showed you how to go from the graph data to the computational graph that we can apply GraphML algorithms. And I showed you how you stack the layers and how the mathematical processes of message generation from each node to the message aggregation to the final new node embedding in uh, an advanced version. But today, we need a complete different visualization. We need a graph. A graph is a network. And you have nodes. This is my little bullets here. And you have edges. And they connect the nodes beautifully. And as I showed you, you can see here, just visually looking at it, the connectivity pattern of those nodes is completely different to the connectivity pattern here of those nodes. So you can say, great, what does it tell us about link prediction on this graph? Well, let's start. As I told you, behind each node, we have a node feature vector or a feature tensor, if you have more complex information to encode. Beautiful. So behind each node, you have here a little red box indicated our tensor. This is it. Next step. If we look closely at our feature tensor, this little box here, you see that maybe one of the features, if we take a big uh, magnifying glass, is a location, geolocation, the location of the city you're living in, the place you're living in. We have some geolocation data in our feature tensor. And if we now look closely at our tensor and we analyze our data, you will see that suddenly within the groups here, you see that here, let's say the nodes are people, persons living here, their location is in a city close by to a city. So we have here the city community. On the other side, you see, if you look into the feature tensors of our node, or maybe it is encoded in the edge tensors, there's a hint that you can deduct that those people have a common feature, and a common feature is that those groups, those communities, for example, live somewhere in a mountain. Beautiful. So what we achieved is we could identify communities. Now, if you're familiar with graph machine learning, the easiest task is, of course, node classification. You have here in the community this little guy here, and you say, hey, is he living here in the city community or is he living here in the mountain community? Now, if all his features, his feature tensors and his connectivity, his incoming links to the other group, and all the other people are living here in the city, and he shares a lot of factual parameters with those people, there's a high probability that he belongs in the city group and not in the mountain group. As you see, we are here talking about probabilities. Great. Let's make this now a little bit more detailed. Let's say that we have now a new second node type. 
we can have in heterogeneous graphs a lot of node types. So as you can see here, this node is a person, this node is a person, this node is a person. But here in the dark blue, I've now indicated two new nodes that have a different node type. And S stands for shoe, a simple shoe. This shoe has a particular feature tensor. And in this feature tensor is the size of the shoe, the color of the shoe, the location of the shoe, if it's available at the retailer. So you see we're building up a recommender system like Amazon. With this new node types, we only have, we do not have it just here in the community, but of course we have here that also the mountain community buys shoes. So let's say, just for demonstration purposes, this node represents a shoe. So you see immediately, we have now a relation. The node type person has an edge, this is a directed edge, and this edge has a property. And it has the property buys, so the person buys shoes. Beautiful. You notice that the other um, edges do not have this particular property, but you can evolve the graph to a more detailed edge characteristic. So, as you can see, this person buys the shoe here, but you also know the other way around is also possible with a different edge characteristics. The shoe belongs to a particular person who bought this shoe. So you can see there is now a lot of possibilities how you can build your graph, how you can analyze the information in a graph if you put in multiple node types. And as I showed you here, if we go back, this is an edge type. This is a red edge type with the characteristic by. And we have another edge type, like another node type here, with the characteristics edge characteristic belongs to. Shoe belongs to a person who bought the shoe. So you see suddenly the structure of the graph becomes a lot more intuitive. And you can say, ah, oh, yeah, now I get it. Interesting fact, of course, if we have a node type, this doesn't tell us anything about the, the values that are now in our node feature tensor, in the dark blue feature tensor of our two shoes here, or of this mountain shoe. So the values in this tensor here is of course not equal to the value in this tensor here. This shoe has, I don't know, it's much more robust. This is for the mountains. Let's have a look. Here we have this shoe for the mountains, exactly like my shoe, wet, always wet at the front. And in the city, if you go to the opera, you have, of course, this kind of shoe. So you see the characteristics of the shoe that are in the feature tensors are completely different. Just a short visualization. Beautiful. But now for the task of link prediction. Now, focus here on the left area. We have here a person living in a city with a particular uh, feature tensor. And you can say now, hey, in, machine, in graph machine learning, message passing is one of the main workhorses if we want to do link prediction, graph sage, GCN, and whatever, or GAT. And you have here now, you look at the local environment. And if you want to say here, this person and this particular pair of shoes, this link prediction, how does it evolve? Where does it come from? Now, it comes from the community. It comes from the local community of this particular node. Let's see. We have here person one living in a city and this person bought the shoe here. We have here another person also living in the city, belonging to the same community, to the same geolocation community, also bought this shoe. This person, same community, also bought this shoe. Now, this node in question is also a person living in the city, belonging to the same community, at least if you look at this. And if I'm Amazon, I would say, hey, a lot of people with the same characteristics like you have in your feature tensor, they bought this shoe. All three people bought this shoe. Now, would you like to buy this shoe? Maybe there is a link to established, and this is the reason of a recommender system, how it works more or less the theory behind it, the understanding, the idea behind it. Everybody else is doing it in your community. Why don't you want to buy this shoe? Maybe you are interested in this. 
They have no further information about you except what is in the feature tensor, or what you published on social media that they put in the feature tensor, or whatever you looked at, who you talked to, where you are located. They can generate these beautiful communities in the cloud with machine learning, and then Amazon proposes or indicates, hey, maybe there's this new sale for this shoe, everybody else bought it. Great. Now, of course, the same is true for other communities. If you look here now at the mountain community, the same idea, you have the same idea that comes into play. You have here all these different persons in the mountains, and all those people bought this heavy, heavy duty shoe. Beautiful. And now you say, okay, but this person has not bought the shoe yet. But since this is a mountain shoe, and this is a person living in a mountain, as we deducted from the feature tensors and from the vicinity of the graph, if you just do a one hop or maybe a two hop, you have two GNN layers where you do graph ML. The result of your graph ML model is that they tell you, hey, for a link prediction, there's a high probability that if you tell those people, those person here, hey, look, there's a beautiful shoe, a lot of other people in your community bought this kind of shoe. Let me show you, we have this shoe now and it's on sale. So you see, the idea how you can make sense of link prediction becomes clearer now if you look at this simple example. And you know what? At the very beginning, when I learned graph neural networks, I had a problem understanding how is it possible that graph neural network with link prediction task have such good results? How is it possible? And not the code, not how to implement it, that this is just done, but what is the main point, the, the, the main idea behind all of this? And it, it is the real world behavior of a community. So, we started with the question, why does link prediction work? And I just wanted to give you a very intuitive explanation. And the reason is because there is a relation in the real world data. Maybe there's a hidden relation. You don't know who bought the shoes in your mountain community. But a lot of people bought the shoe, they were happy, they have a high rating. So Amazon is, is indicating to you, hey, look at this shoe. This is where everybody else bought this shoe with a high rating, they are happy. Why don't you wanna buy this? So. In the real world data, you have these hidden relations. You don't see, but Amazon will see all the people in your vicinity, what they did. So in real world data communities of people, maybe they behave, behave similar. Maybe they have interests in a similar set of topics. Maybe they listen to the same set of TV broadcasting companies. Maybe they participate in the same social media groups, or maybe they show similar sports activity, the sports profile, their interest in sports. You know, there's so much data you can put in a, in a feature tensor, encode the information of a person, of an object, and you build these recommender systems, these graph networks where link prediction works. But link prediction does not work because there is some miracle mathematical formula behind it. Yes, it's beautiful mathematics, but the reason is because there is a hidden relation in the real world data. And this is why if you talk about cybersecurity or, or, or credit card fraud, this is why fraud detection works so beautifully in graph neural networks, because you have the structural information of the graph of the interlinks and given the rich content in your, in your specific feature tensors that belongs to each node or even in the edge feature tensors. So you see link prediction, fraud detection, security, cybersecurity, everything. This is the reason why it works because we have so much information about the objects, the edges and the overall structure of the graph. And if you have suddenly a node coming into your community and the node has not the typical characteristics in the feature tensor. With fraud detection, it is very easy if you do a node embedding of this new person that comes into your network and wants to do some, I don't know, something with your credit card. The credit card co company can tell, hey, wow, this is an outlier. This is something we have to specific take care of. And also, 
a lot of people told me, hey, they created some synthetic data, side, uh, data sets, and when they performed link prediction tasks, their results were not stunning, not, not stunning at all. Well, of course, if you have a computer creating data just by pure probability densities or, or Gaussian distribution or whatever you have, there is, you know, the last slide, oops, there is no relation, hidden relationship in the real world data that we want to discover with link prediction. So everything that is artificially created without a clever algorithm behind that, that establishes this relation, just some synthetic data sets, and you do a link prediction task, you will not be happy with the result. You need real world data. The real behavior of humans, the real behavior in social media groups, the real behavior. This is why there is the explanation in the real world data. Now, if you want to know how to do link prediction with GraphSage, my last video was on GraphSage and my next video will be on coding link prediction. I say thank you for listening and I see you in my next movie.